This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Sodom and Gomorrah, Texas, by R. A. Lafferty. Manuel shouldn't have been employed as a census taker. He wasn't qualified. He couldn't read a map. He didn't know what a map was. He only grinned when they told him that North was at the top. He knew better. But he did write a nice round hand, like a boy's hand. He knew Spanish and enough English. For the sector that was assigned to him, he would not need a map. He knew it better than anyone else, certainly better than any map maker. Besides, he was poor and needed the money. They instructed him and sent him out, or they thought they had instructed him. They couldn't be sure. Count everyone? All right. Fill in everyone? I need more papers. We will give him more if you need more, but there aren't so many in your sector. Lots of them. Lobos, Teones, Soros, even people. Only the people, Manuel. Do not take the animals. How would you write up the animals? They have no names. Oh, yes, all have names. Might as well take them all. Only people, Manuel. Mulos? No. Conneos? No, Manuel. No, only the people. No trouble. Might as well take them all. Only people. God, give me strength. Only people, Manuel. How about little people? Children? Yes. That has been explained to you. Little people, not children. Little people. If they are people, take them. How big they have to be. It doesn't make any difference how big they are. If they are people, take them. That is where the damage was done. The official had given a snap judgment, and it led to disaster. It was not his fault. The instructions are not clear. Nowhere in all the verbiage does it say how big they have to be to be counted as people. Manuel took Muller and went to work. His sector was the Santa Magdalena, a scrap of bald-headed and desolate mountains, steep but not high, and so torrid in the afternoons that it was said that the old lava sometimes began to writhe and flow again from the sun's heat alone. In the centre valley there were five thousand acres of slag and vitrified rock from some forgotten old blast that had melted the hills and destroyed their mantle reducing all to a terrible flatness. This was called Sodom. It was strewn with low-lying ghosts, as of people and objects, formed when the granite bubbled like water. Away from the dead centre the ravines were body-deep in chaparral, and the hillsides stood grey-green with old cactus. The stunted trees were lower than the giant bushes and yucca. Manuel went with Muller, a round, easy man, and a sparse, gaunt mule. Muller was a mule, but there were other inhabitants of the Santa Magdalena, of a genus less certain. Yet even about Muller there was an oddity in her ancestry. Her paternal grandfather had been a goat. Manuel had once told Mr. Marshall about this, but Mr. Marshall had not accepted it. She is a mule, therefore her father was a jack, therefore his father was also a jack, a donkey. It could not be any other way. Manuel often wondered about that, for he had raised the whole strain of animals, and he remembered who had been with whom. A donkey, a jack, two feet tall and with a beard and horns. I always thought that he was a goat. Manuel and Muller stopped at noon on Lost Soul Creek. There would be no travel in the hot afternoon. But Manuel had a job to do, and he did it. He took the forms from one of the packs that he had unslung from Muller and counted out nine of them. He wrote down all the data of nine people. He knew all there was to know about them, their nativities and their antecedents. 
he knew that there were only nine regular people in the nine hundred square miles of the Santa Magdalena. But he was systematic, so he checked the list over again and again. There seemed to be somebody missing. Ah, oh, yes, himself. He got another form and filled out all the data on himself. Now, in one way of looking at it, his part of the census was finished. If only he had looked at it that way, he would have saved worry and trouble for everyone. And also 10,000 lives. But the instructions they had given him were ambiguous, and for all that they had tried to make them clear. So very early the next morning he rose and cooked beans, and said, Might as well take them all. He called Mula from the thorn patch where she was grazing, gave her salt, and loaded her again. Then they went to take the rest of the census, but in fear. There was a clear duty to get the job done, but there was also a dread of it that his superiors did not understand. There was reason also why Mula was loaded so she could hardly walk with packs of census forms. Manuel prayed out loud as they climbed the purgatorial scarp above Los Sols Creek. Rega per nostros pecadores ahora. The very gulches stood angry and stark in the early morning. Y en la hora de nuestra morte. Three days later, an incredible dwarf staggered into the outskirts of High Plains, Texas, followed by a dying wolf-sized animal that did not look like a wolf. A lady called the police to save the pair from rock-throwing kids who might have killed them, and the two as yet unclassified things were taken to the station house. The dwarf was three foot high, a skeleton stretched over with brown burnt leather. The other was an uncanine-looking dog-sized beast, so full of burrs and thorns that it might have been a porcupine. It was a nightmare replica of a shrunken mule. The midget was mad. The animal had more presence of mind. She lay down quietly and died, which was the best she could do, considering the state that she was in. "'Who is Census Chief now?' asked the mad midget. "'Is Mr. Marshall's boy the Census Chief?' Mr. Marshall is, yes. Who are you? How do you know, Marshall? And what is that which you are pulling out of your pants, if they are pants? Census list. Names of everybody in the Santa Magdalena. I had to steal it. It looks like microfilm. The writing is so small. And the roll goes on and on. There must be a million names here. Little bit more. Little bit more. I get two bits a name. They got Marshall there. He was very busy, but he came. He had been given a deadline by the mayor and the citizens group. He had to produce a population of 10,000 people for High Plains, Texas. And this was difficult, for there weren't that many people in the town. He had been working hard on it, though. But he came when the police called him. You, Marshall's little boy... You look just like your father, said the midget. That voice! I should know that voice, even if it's cracked to pieces. That has to be Manuel's voice. Sure I'm Manuel, just like I left thirty-five years ago. You can't be Manuel. Shrunk three feet and two hundred pounds and aged a million. You look here at my census slip. It says I'm Manuel. And here are nine more of the regular people, and one million of the little people. I couldn't get them on the right forms, though. I had to steal their list. You can't be Manuel, said Marshall. He can't be Manuel, said the big policeman and the little policeman. Maybe not, then, the dwarf conceited. I thought I was, but I wasn't sure. Who am I, then? Let's look at the other papers and see which one I am. No, you can't be any of them either, Manuel. And you surely can't be Manuel. Give him a name anyhow and get him counted. We've got to get to that 10,000 mark. Tell us what happened, Manuel. If you are, which you aren't, but tell us. 
After I counted the regular people, I went to count the little people. I took a spade and spade it off the top of their town to get in. But they put an encanto on me and made me and Muller run a treadmill for thirty-five years. Where was this? At the little people town, Morve Denis. But after thirty-five years, the encanto wore off, and Muller and I stole the list of names and ran away. But where did you really get this list of so many names written so small? Suffering saddle sores. Marshal, don't ask the little bug so many questions. You got a million names in your hand. Certify them. Send them in. There's enough of us here right now. We declare that place unannexed forthwith. This will make High Plains the biggest town in the whole state of Texas. So Marshall certified them and sent them into Washington. This gave High Plains the largest percentage increase of any city in the nation. But it was challenged. There were some sore heads in Houston who said that it wasn't possible. They said High Plains had nowhere near that many people, and there must have been a miscount. And in the days that the argument was going on, they cleaned up and fed Manuel, if it were he, and tried to get from him a cogent story. How do you know it was thirty-five years you were on the treadmill, Manuel? Well, it seemed like thirty-five years. It could have only been about three days. Then how come I'm so old? We don't know that, Manuel. We sure don't know that. How big were these people? Who knows? A finger long? Maybe two? And what is their town? It is an old prairie dog town that they fixed up. You have to dig down with a spade to get to the streets. Maybe they were really all prairie dogs, Manuel. Maybe the head got you and you only dreamed that they were little people. Prairie dogs can't write as good as on that list. Prairie dogs can't write hardly at all. That's true. The list is hard to explain. And such odd names on it, too. Where is Mula? I don't see Mula since I came back. Mula just lay down and died, Manuel gave me the slip. Why didn't I think of that? Well, I'll do it too. I'm too worn out for anything else. Before you do, Manuel, just a couple of last questions. Make them real fast, then. I'm on my way. Did you know these little people were there before? Oh, sure. They're a long time. Did anybody else ever see them? Oh, sure. Everybody in the Santa Magdalena see them. Eight, nine people see them. And, Manuel, how do we get to the place? Can you show us on a map? Manuel made a grimace and died quietly, as Muller had done. He didn't understand those maps at all and took the easy way out. They buried him, not knowing for sure whether he was Manuel come back or what he was. There wasn't much of him to bury. It was the same night, very late, and after he had been asleep, that Marshall was awakened by the ring of an authoritative voice. He was being harangued by a four-inch tall man on his bedside table, a man of dominating presence and acid voice. Come out of that cot, you clown. Give me your name and station. I'm Marshall and I suspect that you are a late pig sandwich, or caused by one. I should eat so late. Say, sir, when you reply to me, I am no pig sandwich, and I do not commonly call on fools. Get on your feet, you clod. And, wonderingly, Marshall did. I want the list that was stolen. Don't gape. Get it. What list? Don't stall. Don't stutter. Give me our tax list that was stolen. It isn't words that I want from you. Listen, you cicada. I'll take you and you will not. You will notice that you are paralyzed from neck down. 
I suspect that you were always so from there up. Where is the list? S sent it to Washington. You bug-eyed beamer! Do you realize what a trip that will be? You grandfather of inanities! It will be a pleasure to destroy you. I don't know what you are, or if you are really. I don't believe that you even belong on the world. Not belong on the world? We own the world. We can show written title to the world. Can you? I doubt it. Where did you get the title? None of your business. I'd rather not say. Oh, well, we got it from the promoter of sorts. A con man, really. I'll have to admit that we were taken. But we were in a spot and needed a world. He said that the larger bifurcates were too stupid to be a nuisance. We should have known that the stupider a creature, the more of a nuisance it is. I had about decided the same thing about the smaller a creature. We may have to fumigate that old mountain mess. Oh, you can't harm us. We're too powerful. But we can obliterate you in an instant. Ha! Huh. Say, ha, huh, sir, when you address me. Do you know the place in the mountain that is called Sodom? I know the place. It was caused by a large meteor. It was caused by one of these. What he held up was the size of a grain of sand. Marshall could not see it in detail. There was another city of you bug-eyed beasts there, said the small martinet. You wouldn't know about it. It's been a few hundred years. We decided it was too close. Now I have decided that you are too close. A thing that size couldn't crack a walnut. You floundering fop! It will blast this town flat. What will happen to you? Nothing. I don't even blink for things like that. How do you trigger it off? You gaping goof! I don't have time to explain that to you. I have to get to Washington. It may be that Marshall did not believe himself quite awake. He certainly did not take the threat seriously enough, for the little man did trigger it off. When the final count was in, High Plains did not have the highest percentage gain in population in the nation. Actually, it showed the sharpest decline from 7,313 to nothing. They were going to make a forest preserve out of the place, except that it has no trees worthy of the name. Now it is proposed to make it the Sodom and Gomorrah State Park, from the two mysterious scenes of desolation there, just seven miles apart. It is an interesting place, as wild a region as you will ever find, and it is recommended for the man who has seen everything. End of Sodom and Gomorrah, Texas by R. A. Lafferty Read by Lucy LaFaro, New South Wales, Australia, January 27, 2008. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org.